Hi, welcome to week 50 of uh, Real Time Recorded. I'm with, uh, as always, Zia Scaravola. How are you, Zia? Hey, Dave. How are you? Happy holidays. I'm good. I, I've spent the entire week in WebEx mode. We had the uh, WebEx One conference. Uh, I've been working up a WebEx One research note, and uh, I'm having trouble like thinking about anything else. And anything else even happened this week, Zia? Well, AWS is also going on this week. But, uh, oh, WebEx yeah. Is- I've heard of them. Yeah. Uh, WebEx certainly dominated the news, and that the it was a good event. I mean, it was, they've had collaboration events before, but this was certainly, I think, uh, the best well done, and had the most, you know, kind of stuff as far as announcements and new features, and, you know, goes. So the, the, it was an interesting on. hybrid kind of because a lot of web, a lot of these virtual events are condensed and and not as packed as some of these bigger events that are spread out over weeks. And Cisco kind of did a hybrid; they put three weeks of information into two days. And it was a uh, really intense, uh, intense uh, virtual event. So uh, one, of the, one of the, or let's say two of the key themes out of uh, WebEx One was they want to make meetings 10 times better. We've actually heard that from them for a while, but that was a big theme of the event. And they also want to, they also played a lot on the ex- inclusivity and making sure that meetings are inclusive for all involved. Um, I, I, I have to say, I, I like the 10x better theme. It, it's a very specific idea and it has this air of being quantifiable, not, not 11 times better, not eight times better, but 10x better, really an order of magnitude better. Uh, I, I see people react to that differently. I'm sure you've seen that too, Zia. I, I've seen people like, like, how can online meetings really be better than in-person meetings? But I, I, I tend to completely agree that I'm one of these people that find online meetings are often already, maybe not 10 X better, but are already better than in-person meetings. You know, only in online meetings, you can have uh, volume and mute mute controls. You have this uh, noise reduction technology, which is actually pretty amazing now, particularly out of Cisco. Uh, You've got things like captioning and translation, uh, the ability to record. uh, And the newest thing they introduced is the concept of meeting templates, you can't do this stuff in 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 person meetings. I I, I really like uh, the goal, and I like that it's aspirational because, like I said, meetings are better now. Online meetings are better now, but uh, they will become ten x better. And I and I like that that steady march. I, what do you think, Zeus? Yeah, well, the inclusive one wasn't specific to collab, right? The Cisco's corporate mission uh, back at Cisco Live changed the power and inclusive future for all. Uh, one of the interesting points, Javed Khan, the uh, the GM of Collab, he had said, was that they he admitted they were behind in a lot of features and they've caught up. And now what you're seeing is an acceleration of AI technologies used to help them, you know, arrive a lot of advanced features they didn't have before. Now, uh, another one of the really interesting announcements mixed in with the massive number of announcements on the WebEx side uh, was their CCAS product. And their, their, their contact center as a service product uh, was long overdue. This is something Cisco has talked about for a long time. They've kind of, you know, massaged, let's say, the definition of what CCAS is to fit the fact, you know, that they had HCS and Broadsoft. And one of the things that I like that they did was instead of doing a quick lift and shift of those plat- private cloud platforms, Broadsoft was kind of a public cloud platform, but in- instead of doing a lift and shift in those, they actually built a, a new platform from the ground up to be purely cloud native. And what that's gonna do, it'll help them down the road and be able to accelerate feature development. And you know, you think of the speed at which cloud native companies move, they should be able to do that in the contact center side. Job had actually did talk about the challenge of if you roll things out too quickly, people can't consume them. So now they've got to build this engine to be able to do that um, from a, and, and time it in, in a way people can consume it. But it is you know, fully omni-channel, it's, you know, it's an all digital platform. And so they're here finally in the CCAS system. But to me, this is the start. Now now is when the hard work begins. And so what do you think of that product? Yeah, you didn't mention the product. It's actually uh, the WebEx Contact Center. And uh, it is it is uh, purported to be a cloud native uh, CCAS solution, which is uh, uh, not the case of a lot of the CCAS providers that we know so well in the space. A lot of them are basically single instance hosted models. And so cloud native is a more distributed uh, architecture and more of a modern architecture. Yeah. And, and so uh, Cisco has the uh, 
uh, the, the resources, whether it be money or uh, expertise or, or uh, know-how with their installed base of, uh, of solutions uh, to pull off a brand new, you know, how would you reimagine a contact center uh, built for the cloud in 2020? They have all that stuff to pull this off. So um, now you always have this build versus buy decision whenever every company has to face. And, and Cisco chose, apparently they chose both. They decided to build the core infrastructure, the core, the core engine, which is WebEx Contact Center. And then we just announced, you know, during the same week, uh, their acquisition of IMI Mobile. And they also announced Lido for their meetings. But, but IMI Mobile really fits the uh, CCAS uh, story, you know, very much like a, like a glove, like made to order practically. Uh, it, it's got the... Um, uh, API model and everything they do. They've got very strong omni-channel capabilities. And so that'll bring, I mean, Cisco's already got uh, like Facebook and um, uh, I forget which ones they have, but but they're going to have a whole catalog now of, of, uh, of omni-channel channels. And, and it's not a hard thing to change that out because it's all, it was built for APIs. It's a new API model. Um, it's, it's, uh, it fits their WebEx as a platform view because uh, IMI Mobile had a, a enterprise CPaaS offering, so uh, uh, it's already got basically an infrastructure for CPaaS, and uh, it also uh, gives uh, the WebEx team uh, more of a, uh, you know, I'll use the word channel, but not like omni-channel, a way of expanding uh, their journey mapping capabilities. Remember, they acquired CloudCherry um, uh, out of the contact center. So it's really an interesting uh, a story. I, I, I can't wait to see how another this available, how, how the next year, how this uh, gets adoption and, and gets tested. I think it would be pretty interesting. The, you know, the other notable uh, piece of news I think out of the event was just the overall new WebEx app. Uh, this is something they needed for a while. You know, the, Cisco as a company has talked about the importance of continuous collaboration, being able to go from meetings to uh, to chat in order to events and things like that. But they had two apps for that. They had WebEx meetings and WebEx teams. So those are gone in favor of just a single application. I think this is something they've badly needed for a while. Um, they've loaded the thing up with new features. We've talked about some of them. Uh, one of the things that's always made Cisco unique too is the breadth of, of uh, hardware devices that they have in their portfolio. And there's a lot of manufacturers that make hardware, but nobody's got the range of devices uh, that Cisco has, and they announced some new ones at the event. Well, I'm I'm actually really impressed with what they pulled off. They had a lot of announcements with the new uh, WebEx, and um, the the gesture capability is something that really resonated with me. I, I I've I've written before about this, and you know I never know anyone reads it, so I'm just going to assume that Java had read it and he implemented this, and it's my idea. But I, I've written before that I don't like the raise hand function of a of any meeting app, and. And the problem I have with that is, you know, all technology basically imitates the, the, the known. The best example is the very first soft phones used to look just like uh, hard phones or a little cartoon and have little buttons and, and the handset. Uh, and, and, and then technology kind of matures and adapts. And now the soft phones don't look like uh, old ca cartoons anymore. And they just have the functions and they have newer kinds of functions that you couldn't necessarily do before. And so raise hand to me was this, was this uh, flash to the past um, and and it seemed like there should be better ways for people to engage in a video meeting. And so what Cisco said, is, if you have a question, raise your hand, and it will detect that your hand is raised and then indicate to the speaker uh, or the presenter that that people have a question. Now, that to me is just so much more natural, and I and I really like the way that they're doing the gestures. There's other gestures that they'll, some of these are not as intuitive. There's ways to mute the microphone and un unmute. There's lots of different things you can do, and and just like on your smartphone, some of these gestures will be natural. Some of them will have to be learned. But but uh, I love the fact that they're getting some of these natural ones uh, nailed. And I and I have to say that the new desk uh, the desk hub is a very interesting new category type of device. Um, now I've written a lot and talked a lot about these new video first devices for desktops. Uh, we've, we've talked about the Facebook portal. We've talked about there's there's actually quite a few of them out right now that are just basically this next generation of video first phones. And the problem with all of these devices, I love them all by the way, but the problem with all of them is that they have a low camera. So you have this up the nose angle, uh, yeah, camera angle, and you've also got a small screen. Um, and so Cisco's kind of solved that by saying, why don't we build a video first device 
without a camera and without a screen. And then people can plug in their own, whatever size monitor they want, which they could also use on their laptop or their desktop or whatever. And they can put the webcam up on top of that and ideally a Cisco webcam that they've also made available. So they've kind of, they've kind of taken a video first approach on a phone that doesn't have a camera or a, or a screen. But to me, that makes perfect sense. And I, I love the way that they're thinking about this. They're reinventing the category. And uh, it's also very optimized for hot desking or hoteling or whatever you want to call it. And I think that'll be very important in the, in the near term future. So uh, to, the, to the, the new WebEx app, I, I think I'll take a toast to that. Yeah. So Dave, this uh, week uh, wasn't all WebEx. Uh, other things shockingly happened. Uh, yesterday, Ring Central, or uh, sorry, 8x8 announced that they were hiring Ring Central's former CEO, David Sipes, to be their new CEO. And actually, I really like this hiring. I think uh, their former CEO, Vic Verma, who will be leaving the company, uh, was an interesting sort of double edged sword for Ring Central. He was tremendously visionary. Like when you think about the things that 8x8 did, they were one of the first to buy a team chat company with their same room. They, they were, I believe, the first UCAS vendor to roll out its own CCAS product as well. Right. So he had the right vision. He understood where the market was going, but he didn't execute very well on the sales and marketing side. If you look in the last three years, they've had three CFOs, three CMOs. Right. They've had a couple of channel heads. And uh, I, you know, I was talking with an equity analyst about this and they said uh, their feelings on Vic was he thinks about things. He thinks about things. He thinks about it again. And while he's thinking about it, the market moves away from it. So they actually use CCAS as a great example. He was right. Um, and so what he's left behind is a great platform. Customer sat. And you talk to 8 by customers, they love the products, right? Uh, and I think what Sipes is going to bring is some of the ring central execution uh, to 8 by 8 which is what they need. And I think this could be a real inflection point for 8 by 8 you know, I'm glad to see uh, Sipes is back. He's been a fixture at Ring Central for quite some time, and and uh, I've always enjoyed him. Last saw him at a uh, baseball game. I think what's it called, Ring Central Stadium or something like that in uh, California. Um, but I'll tell you, that guy, I, I did not want to play poker with, uh, with that guy. Uh, that was the day before a major announcement. I couldn't get a damn thing out of that guy. He, he's a hard one to read, in my opinion. Um and uh, but putting Sipes aside for a moment, just the uh, turnover of of CEOs, uh, the UCAS business is tough. Uh, you know, Ring Central and Microsoft are making everyone look bad, and I feel bad for all these executives that are under a lot of pressure. Uh, it is a tough business. We've seen a tremendous turnover. If you look across the industry, you see a lot of CEOs that have been there a year or less. I mean, you've got. Uh, uh, well, Javid and G2, not CEO, but uh, leading yeah. at Cisco. Uh, Marriott Mitel just hit her year anniversary. You've got uh, Brian Day at Fuse has been there less than a year. Um, we just interviewed Rory on a, po on a podcast uh, at uh, the CEO of Vonage. I think that was the four or five month mark now. Um, you've got uh, Dave at Poly, uh, who, who's only been there about three, two or three months. Uh, Tony at Genesis has been there just over a year. Uh, what's the guy's name at Ribbon? I can't even think of the guy. Uh, um, uh, the, the CEO of Ribbon has been there. He started in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and uh, uh, so in that sense, I'm really sorry to see Vic go. I thought he was a good guy. Uh, he had been there uh, since 2013. He had a pretty good run. Uh, you mentioned the early pivot to Contact Center. I thought that was good. He made a lot of pivots, actually, at uh, 8x8. And I thought most of them were pretty 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 good. They did the acquisition, the same room, which I thought was really smart. Uh, they have a very strong chat app as a result of that. He did the acquisition of Jitsi, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, uh, the acquisition of Mariana IQ, which I don't know much about, but but a lot of companies were trying to grab AI assets while they could. Uh, I never really understood the wave cell thing. That, that one was a little beyond me, but but uh, uh, I think I think Vic did some really good stuff. Uh, I hope to see him resurface in the industry. And the good news is it probably won't be very long until a position is open. So uh, with, with that, uh, we'll wrap up week 50 of uh, Real Time Recorded. Uh, thank you for watching.